begin with. Thank you. I'm going to stand up on the grounds that you won't see me if I sit down and you probably won't hear me. Can you hear in the back? Yes. Right? Mary very kindly introduced me um, by my title and also said that I was a European expert. I spend my life doing... The day job is teaching European politics in Cambridge. The rest of the time I spend in the House of Lords speaking to the Lib Dems on European issues, which is a lovely title because it means I don't have to focus simply on Brexit, at least in theory. But the reality, of course, that as an academic and a politician, like everybody on the panel, including our chairman, I have spent almost every living moment of the last three years thinking about the possibility of a referendum, legislating for the referendum, <coughs> having the referendum, and dealing with the aftermath of the referendum. Some of my academic colleagues are now counted as Brexit experts, and they pop up on the media as Brexit experts. And I'm not quite sure what that means. Because I don't think anybody can honestly say, as of the 7th of November 2018, that we have got the first idea of what is going to happen. And that is not because I think my colleagues aren't very good at understanding what has happened. Some of them might even be very good at theorising European integration and understanding how, if you have a financial crisis, the European Union might respond. But when you have a situation like a member state saying, we want to leave, and then saying, but we're not really sure what we want when we leave, except when we've left, we still want all the benefits, but we don't want to pay, and we can still just come across and do our shopping and live in France if we feel like it and retire there, but we don't want to pay. It's quite difficult to see how anybody is going to get to a clear, obvious outcome. And for the last two and a bit years, it has felt in Parliament as if we have rehearsed the Brexit debates again and again and again. And that is even before the Prime Minister has come back with a withdrawal agreement. So we are in a peculiar situation where a referendum that was supposed to lead to the Conservative Party healing its divisions over Europe, where obviously the intention was we were supposed to stay in the European Union, deal with the question and move on, has now fundamentally riven the Conservative Party. Um, so apologies to any Tories here, um, but I didn't call that referendum. And so we have a situation where David Cameron has left us with a riven Conservative Party, a country that is far more divided than we were before the referendum started, and with an outcome that remains still deeply unpredictable. Because it might be that we get a deal, and if we get that deal, maybe the House of Commons in its meaningful vote will accept that it's the best deal that we can have, and maybe it will look as if it's in the national interest. And then we'll leave the European Union on the 29th of March next year, through some transitional period, where we're still trying to work out where we go next. Because there is still no clarity on what the government thinks it wants, which of course is what makes it so difficult for the EU27 to respond, because they made their position very clear almost <coughs> immediately after our referendum, and Theresa May took till July to try and clarify what she thought the UK w was going to put forward. So as of today, I think the future is incredibly unclear. I think the chance of a no deal, I would put it 40-60, but I was told last night by somebody who's been involved at the European level, mm, much more likely 60-40 because the Northern Ireland backstop issue is likely to be a deal breaker. So chances of getting a deal still pretty unclear. And if there is a deal, getting it through Parliament, even less clear, which then of course leads us to, I've already seen somebody with a T-shirt, the possibility of maybe we end up with another referendum and people's vote which is obviously what the Liberal Democrats are calling for. But at the moment, that depends not on the Liberal Democrats, because there are only 12 in the House of Commons. It depends on a lot of Labour MPs <coughs> deciding that it would be a good thing, and a few renegade Tories. So I'm going to stop there, because I'm about to have a card saying, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll <laughs>